What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? If you recall, Forgotten Weapons did a video called The Worst AK I've Ever Seen. In that video, Ian breaks down easily one of the most butchered kit builds I've ever seen, and unfortunately, it was on a crank parts kit. Very, very highly sought after, very collectible, very rare, and not just that, but it was on a machine gun. You couldn't have chose a worse gun to screw up. A lot of you guys wanted my take on it, so then I did a video talking about his video. It's, it's how YouTube works now, I'm sorry. In which we go over in detail all the things that they screwed up while building this gun. But at the end of that video, I said that if the owner of that machine gun wanted to send it in, we would fix it completely for free. And, uh, we did. She's better now. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to do a deep dive into this, exactly what was wrong with it. Uh, a little bit more than what we said in the video prior, because somehow when we got our hands on it, it was even worse. And then after that, we're going to shoot it a little full auto, because, uh, you know, I think you guys deserve proof of life. But before we do any of that, first a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by a big supporter of the channel, which is Manscaped. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one performance package kit. Included in the performance package kit is the Lawnmower 3.0. It's a waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology. Guaranteed to give you more performance for your package. Because grooming makes your cock look bigger. Moving on. They've also got a bunch of cool stuff like ball deodorant. If you don't know why this is a good idea, ask your girlfriend. Frankly, it's more of a gift for the women in your life. I got all sorts of neat stuff too, like this nose and ear hair trimmer, so you don't have that creepy old man Yoda look going on. For a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts, including this little bag that everything comes in and some anti-chafing Manscaped boxer briefs. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off, free international shipping, and your two free gifts as long as you use the code on the screen here, Herrera20. Leaving links down in the description and in the pinned comment, go ahead and check them out. Your balls and your body will thank you. So this AK was this like a clusterfuck. Just to go over a couple of the details, and I do just mean a couple because if we went over all of them, we'd be here for 30 fucking minutes. Here's our head builder, Zach, going over some of the highlights. Starting from front to back here, typical looking combo block with some leftover brazing there from trying to basically solder the gas block onto the barrel rather than the correct press fit. I don't know what part of building involves spending a handguard retainer, but the previous builder apparently felt it necessary. This looks like to me, like maybe the dude put it in a cordless drill and spun that against the bench grinder. You know, you got two slots for the handguard retainer. It's fine, whatever. These selector notches were done with a Dremel, which is not unheard of, but these are uh, not exactly nice. See these rivets here are very much, um, let's just say amateur. They're not touching and you know, all sorts of crooked. See, there's like a step. That's supposed to be one piece. Um, he drumbled that out. I don't know why. Someone missed a little with the rivet tool. Grinding marks on the trunnion, because why not? There's trigger guard rivets down in there. Or all sorts of wonky. Last but not least, we have the bolt here. Which, yep, that's a, you know, AK-74 bolt. But oh my god. What did he do to those locking lugs? Overall, most of this build is savable. The bolt is definitely trashed. I have a 545 by 39 barrel blank here, and I'm going to have to turn down to approximately this spec, but you know, a little bigger so these fit correctly. That's going to be fun. So right off the bat, the thing that was obvious uh, in, in the original video, uh, the gas block front sight block combo, like the crank combo block, flown off the front of the gun during firing. Normally that's supposed to be a press fit, not just a press fit, but a press fit that's drilled and pinned in place. That's our barrel after it's been pulled. Um, as you'll notice, somebody actually did this on a lathe and they did this on purpose. Up until the end here, where it looks like somebody just took a grinding wheel and attempted to do it themselves. As well as that <laughs> lovely, uh, put, the, put the Dremel down guys, if you don't know what you're doing with it. That's supposed to be a handguard retainer slot. I'm actually kind of impressed they didn't burst through the rifling. But the question is, now that, you know, currently there are people who make reproduction crank barrels, why would you have to turn one down entirely yourself? Well, 
didn't make sense to me until we figured out that the parts, the components that they had on the barrel here uh, were not actual AKS-74U parts. The barrel journals were much bigger, meaning that they belonged to something like a milled arsenal pistol or something, and they just used it in conjunction with a crank kit. Which is why when we tried to put the components off of this gun onto a new crank barrel, it was just freely spinning, just where it was supposed to be a press fit. So Zach had to turn down a completely new barrel uh, for this gun specifically, but the good news is, now all the components fit the way they're supposed to, and they're not gonna go rocket manning off the front of the gun. Another thing that's super important with AKs is lockup, specifically where the bolt lugs engage into the trunnion lugs. That's why cast trunnion AKs explode, that's why poorly headspaced AKs explode. It's really essential to get that right. But you know what's easier than pressing your barrel out a little bit if you pressed it in too far and just really dialing in the headspace? Apparently grinding the shit out of your bolt lugs. Ian talked about it in his video, but I didn't really get an idea for how bad it was until I had it here in my hand. Uh, they just completely ground that away considerably and they appear to have done the same thing on the other side. These are the only two lugs stopping this gun from blowing up. As a comparison, that's how much lug is supposed to be there. That is a significant amount that they ground away. Like you can see they're ground almost over the first number there. Doesn't look like a lot, but it is. Same with this lug. Uh, <laughs> guys, just properly headspace your guns. If at any point you are attacking your bolt lugs with a grinding wheel, it may be time to give it to a professional. So we donated a Bulgarian 74 bolt to this gun, and uh, at the request of the original owner, we actually swapped the calibers to the original 545 by 39 just like God intended. An original crank kit being used, but converted to 223 makes my PP soft, and I'm glad we were able to fix that. But as you can see here, the rivets have all entirely been redone, so now they actually look like rivets are supposed to look like. I don't know what caveman smashed nails together to, to build this original thing, but these are all redone properly, and dare I say, even clone correct. The dust cover hinge was also oversized, so we kind of rigged up a rivet for that. And I know what you're saying, I know what you're gonna say about uh, the lack of a latch here. We do have the latch, the latch goes in just fine. We're just gonna get this thing uh, recoated. I forget if we're doing Russian paint or black Cerakote, uh, but that's gonna have to come out anyway, so they're kind of a bitch to install. No real reason to do it before it gets painted. The other thing about the barrel pin being egged, uh, we fixed that as well. Uh, over time, that is a big problem when it comes to headspace. Not awesome, especially on a machine gun, so we made sure to correct that as well. But it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to bring this beautiful, beautiful crank back to life the proper way. Let's go burn her in. All right, we got a 545 loaded up. Let's see how she runs. significantly better. Let's try that again. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is a huge improvement. So as you just saw, this thing runs a whole lot better, namely because now, now it runs. It was an absolute pleasure for us to take this from <laughs> an abused animal from a Sarah McLaughlin commercial to a beautiful, beautiful crank. I cannot wait to get this repainted and back in the hands of its actual owner. To the actual owner of this beast, thank you so much for being patient with us as we rebuilt this sucker. Uh, she's, she's a beautiful piece now. May she serve you well. It was a privilege for us to be able to restore this baby back to her original glory, and I'm sure it's going to make the internet very happy. Anyways, guys, that's about all we have for today. If you want to check out these cool new AK Guy OD green shirts, you can check them out at Bunker Branding. I've got links in the description and in the pinned comment. Make sure that you're still subscribed. We found that YouTube is unsubscribing a lot of you guys lately. We're not just saying that. Be sure to check. You'd be surprised how many people have left comments saying that they were unsubbed. But seriously, guys, thanks again for watching, 
And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us putting rise to the top But I can't as you can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop Excuse me, Jesus Christ. I got the COVID. All right, that was a good take. I, I, I felt it coming halfway through the take. I'm like, and last but not least. Lovely,